So we will keep playing the Sucker for Love series, which I am totally okay with. Let's see what happens in chapter two. Chapter two, the king in yellow approaches. Hey, Ahi, no worry. No worry. I got started late, so we're fine. In a world terrorized by slavering shadows and tentacled nightmares, something as innocuous as an additional star in the night sky may be the most prophetic premonition of doom. For wherever the lurid golden light of the planet Carcosa shines, the long, wicked shadow of the king in yellow is cast. Behind that mask lies echoes of decadence and disorder, masquerades of limitless cruelty and hideous laughter in equal part. And of all the poor devils seduced by the lavish promises of the God King's court, the favored victims of the King's sadistic amusement are followers belonging to other deities. Uh, what? Where? Uh, did I zone out? I was... What was I doing? Damn. I'm having one hell of a brain fart. I can't even remember for the life of me what I'm supposed to be doing. Everything feels so hazy. Hey, I'm so excited for you, Jaded. Was I... Oh, uh, quick interruption, because Jaded brought up the, uh, the Autumn Ivy t-shirts. So, um, when you join my Patreon, if you are joined for a certain amount of time, you get a t-shirt or a sweatshirt. I think it's a t-shirt or a hoodie. And then a coffee cup. As part of the sub through Patreon. I am, um, I also have a, a red bubble where I sell shirts. I don't think I've ever talked about it, but I do sell, um, shirts and a couple of other things on Redbubble if you guys are interested. I think the link is in my direct.me slash xx so feel free to check that out, but I thought I would drop that. I am gonna try to add designs as I go. There's gonna be some designs for Wolfhead hopefully shortly. I just gotta work out the logistics with a couple of artists. Um, otherwise... I've got that. I'm gonna try to launch some stuff for accessibility of my audio. I do, um, <clears throat> I do uh, spicy audios and I do regular safe for work audios as well as affirmations and a few other things available on my subspaces. So feel free to check those out. Otherwise I do offer them separately as well. You just gotta hit me up, so. Um, oh, I'm so excited for you. You'll have to let me know about the quality and stuff. Uh, the, the shirt that Jaded is talking about is uh, actually, um, hold on, I'm gonna, I'm, I'll just show you guys. Give me a sec. Give me two seconds. Two, two, maybe, maybe three. Maybe three, tech, three, three seconds. Maybe three seconds. <coughs> I gotta remember what the fuck my, my stuff is. Um... I don't remember what, <laughs> what my red bubble is. So I'm gonna have to like <coughs> go from here. Hold on. Uh it's I really like the shirt design. It was it was done by Incognoodle. So Okay, here we go. Maybe I wound up on a web page and it's in French. I don't know what I did. I don't know how to help you with this. Okay, alright, 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 alright. Okay, here. So it is this. This is the design. We train to fight gods and anxiety. So that I'm pretty sure is the shirt that they picked up. If it is not, then it's probably either my um, my logo or the maid, because I actually, um, there's a shirt available for the maid as well as a print of Hawks. I'm gonna try to start throwing up prints and, and mouse pads and various other things as well. Um, I just gotta figure out kind of what the logistics of it is, but yeah. Uh, anyway, so I thought I'd throw that out. Continuing the game though. Was I gonna... Was I going to work? I'm standing outside after all. Yeah, that's gotta be it. The sun's setting, so it's probably around 7pm, which means I'm gonna be crazy late. Ugh, fantastic. That's the beauty of working nights. I can't use the excuse that I overslept. 
<laughs> yeah, boss, I slept all day, sat up sundown, that's why I'm six hours early for my shift? Those sound like the church's noontime bells. It's high noon? No, wait, they must be doing some special evening service or something. I can clearly see it's the golden hour before sunset. I'll just have to ask someone for the time on my way to get to work. If it's not too late, I really hoof it. I just get chewed, chewed out instead of fired. Tells time by the position of the sun. Relatable? I still have to deal with being sweaty, but I'll figure that out when I get there. Oh, someone's coming. Perfect. Fingers crossed I'm not absolutely screwed. That doesn't look safe, sir! Hey, man, sorry to bother you. You wouldn't happen to have the time on you, would you? Uh, hello? Hey, um... Hey? Is this guy ignoring me? Normally I'd say whatever and walk away, but he's unfortunately standing in the only stairway off this floor. The only way to exit this conversation is to shove past him, but this guy's giving me such weird vibes, I don't want to go anywhere near him. The longer I look at him, the guy seems more and more suspicious. That odd posture. He's slowly swaying in an uncanny, disturbing way. The collar of his shirt looks filthy, stained with splotches of deep brown and red. Is... is he bleeding? Does he even live here? This is the top floor and I thought I met all of my neighbors. There's only four apartments up here. My only choices are to go inside and call the police or walk past the freaky guy. I don't have the time to wait around for when the cops show up, so I'll... <sighs> but just as I take a step, I kick something weighty with my shoe. It's bright pink with gold accents. A book? What's... uh... Lena, But... I... I died! The... the world ended! The shock freezes me in place, and I'm because I was so distracted, I didn't even notice them. I duck inside my room, slamming the door in the suspicious men's face. Fumbling with the locks in a panic, I managed to turn the deadbolt. I took a few fearful steps back into the room, clutching the book to my beating chest. I died. I definitely died when I performed the ritual, so... Why am I still here? Where is here? Locked in my room. Oh... Laneha! Laneha! If Laneha was here, she could explain this. Maybe there's something in this book that can save me. I need to hurry. Come on. <coughs> Come on, Laneha, where are you? Uh -huh. Oh, shit. Who is this? Lynetta, you're trying Nobody! To... Missy, what are you doing in my room? Oops. How did you even get in here? Your window was open. No, it wasn't. Uh, no, it's not. Neither way, I'm on the top floor. So how did you? Lynetta sounds like a girl's name, right? This Lynetta is obviously the girl you stood me up for, isn't she? What is her deal? I knew she'd be pissed. I slammed the door in her face, but not so much she wouldn't notice any of the things obviously wrong here. Why doesn't she care about those freaky things stalking me outside? Or what my room is full of evil idols and ritualistic tokens? I can explain all this stuff. Let me guess. Accursed devices used to channel eldritch magic and do the bidding of outer gods. Well, I mean, yeah, that's exactly right. Did you just randomly guess that? No, I've just been playing coy. I know exactly what you've been doing. Oh. You know what this is, don't you? No. It's a golden version of my book. The book I used to perform rituals for Lynetta. Hers looks way more ornate than mine. Considering I ended reality with mine, I can't imagine how dangerous hers must be. Wait a minute. The sky. That suspicious man outside. They all match Missy's book. Is she making all of this happen? Oh, God. When I expected her to do something crazy, I thought she was just going to show up with a hatchet or something. Missy, look, I'm sorry. I, I just got wrapped up in something. Please don't. Sorry. You're sorry. Why are you acting so afraid of me? <laughs> Could it be that you know what this book is capable of? I know all too well, but I also know that these incantations take at least five seconds to pronounce, and that's if she gets it right on the first try. 
So worst case, I've got five seconds to stop her. If I dash for my ritual knife behind her, I might be able to kill her before she does something terrible to me. Wow, that is a really... We need to work on your conflict resolution, my guy. If I can distract her, I might be able to buy myself some more time. Missy, look, I'll do whatever you want. I can be rather demanding. Name your price. So bold. In that case, I have three commands. Number one, you'll address me as your highness from now on. So when I come home, it's welcome home, your highness. When she comes home, she wants to move in, but that means, whatever, it's not like I'm gonna have to actually follow through on these, at least one of us is about to die. As you wish, your highness. What else? Number two, you'll quit your job so you can spend every waking moment catering to me, your one and only. Sure, whatever, just a little bit more until I'm in sprinting range of the knife. And number three. You'll obey every order and whim I have, absolutely, without question. Do you agree to my terms? No. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely what? I didn't know that this was a femdom game, but since we're here... Absolutely, your highness. She just handed over a book without a second thought. Yellow energy pulse. Hey, thank you so much and welcome, Blood Raven. She just handed over a book without a second thought. Yellow energy pulses and crackles from my fingertips. She, she's not here to hurt me. Confused. I've liked you for a long time, and you're a capable bookkeeper. Handsome to boot. There's no reason we can't simply work together. Okay. After all, a relationship based on threats of violence and fear is no good, right? No? R right. We narrowly escaped with our lives just now, but something's bothering me. How does she remember that I stood her up in the reality that ended on her Lynetta's awakening? And how did she get in through my window? I doubt she's able to climb through several stories dressed like that and then pass through my locked window without breaking it. There's only one possible answer. All right, your highness. I'm ready to enter my lifetime of servitude to you. I just have one small request first. Being? Could you tell me what this is? Huh? Your Worcestershire sauce? What about it? So you're an eldritch god disguised as a human! What? How did you figure that out so suddenly? <laughs> Isn't it obvious? No human being can pronounce worst. 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 Where? Worcestershire. Of course not. It's an eldritch alone word. Why else would it be spelled like that? <sighs> I was careless. After all this time, I wasted trying to seduce you in this slovenly form. Uh, pause. 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 Fucking pause. Fucking pause. Fucking pause. What did this man... What did this man do to get all of these eldritch gods being like, Yeah, man, that's the D I want to hit. That's it. I want to hit that. Not just, but I want to date that. What the fuck did he do? What kind of man is this? What what reality does this man exist in where all these eldritch gods are like... Know what I'm saying? <sighs> yeah, you should have tried using your eldritch form instead. I would have fallen in love immediately. No, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. He has his license. He has his license. What? What? You think cosmic entities 
are attractive as a human. Uh, that's what I said. 3D women are fine, but fourth dimensional girls with non Euclidean geometry are smoking hot. They've got curves I can literally get lost in. <laughs> that is a pickup line. That was such a pickup line! My cosmic godhood. I would have just led with that. I. I. This man. What is. What is this man? Is he okay? Is he. Is he okay? Allow me to properly introduce myself. King in yellow, heiress to Carcosa. Charmed, I'm sure. She's gorgeous. A bona fide eldritch king. In my room? Oh man, all my fantasies of smooching and eldritch horror are coming true. An eldritch royalty to boot. The king in yellow. Sounds familiar. I can't remember why. My memory of my other existence is kind of fuzzy. What I do remember is that her followers tend to be incredibly violent towards cultists loyal to other gods. Like, Lynetta. Shit. I kinda got swept up in the moment and almost forgot I'd already pledged fealty to a different god. This reality, or not. Ah, uh, wait. I'm... I'm sorry. I, I'm already involved with another god. I... I'm following Lynetta. I know. So loyal, so faithful, and devoted. That's why I want you to be my follower instead. In exchange for serving me, I shall grant you anything you desire. Well, power, whatever that rotten witch Lynetta offered you, I can double it. I must have the good D. Right? Like, this guy, this guy has got some literal otherworldly, like personality to offer campfire stop I can't <laughs> she promised me a smooch I shall... what, what, what? you handed over your reality to her for a singular smooch are you mad yeah a little It's I <laughs> it's curved. You heard me. You're going to match her offer then? I suppose if that's all you're selling the world for, then a smooch can be arranged. I see you. I see you, sis. I see what you're doing. No way. You promised to double it. That's two smooches. Wait, no, hold on a minute. Two of them. On the lips. All right, all right, very well. Two smooches, lip to lips. Satisfied? I just. Usually, my followers ask for inordinate wealth, unquestionable fame, and influence, or some lavish indulgence. Nobody's ever dared to ask to kiss me before, so. She's blushing for real. You really want to smooch me? The prompt book I gave you contains the script for the king in yellow. Uh, you mean the spell book that I was afraid of? Is just a damn play? This thing is just a playbook? Where are, where are all the power invoking rituals? Rituals? Is this some sort of peasant joke that I'm too rich to understand? God, I wish I was that rich. No, we aren't barbaric swamp folk casting hocus pocus in a cave. We have a little class. To invoke my power, my play must be performed perfectly. Perfectly? I, I, um, I don't always get these rituals, uh, I mean scenes, um, right the first time? So, like, what happens if I botch my lines or I set a scene wrong? Your performance will receive a scathing review in the Carcosan Times publication. And you'll also be killed. I'm getting those smooches, no matter what. Break a leg, dearest. Okay! Act one, the invitation. Setting, exterior, in view of the city. Host, click and drag the first word of the line slowly. All right, so we gotta, we gotta go over here. Hey, Esther? Don't do that! 
What? All I did was say hello. Don't speak my name, dearest. There's a reason I am she who is not to be named. The lusty Argonian maid, scene Esther one. Summons me to them. If I can't say your name, what am I supposed to call you? you? Many options. You may call me your majesty, your grace, my king. <laughs> you could even call me your royal highness if you're feeling particularly subservient. Like I said, femdom. Esther, Esther, Esther! Stop that! <laughs> okay, alright. Uh, exterior and view of the city. Okay, so we gotta go outside, right? In view of the city. Okay, we got our city there. Greetings, stranger, fortuned fellow. Tis a party for which I below. Bell I invite the king in yellow, so come all ye in ye till. Wear thine masks upon you to my masquerade until he may come to lost ye till. Hope for us there may be still. Shadows lengthen dim streets darken to the curfew thou must hearken. Why so loudly dost thou bark in the dim city of ye till? Only much attention, quite unwholesome you'll instill from the souls of poor Yatil. Why attract so much ill will? Uh, um, 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 um. King enters disguised. Uh, okay, okay. Uh. This is just what I must seek, see. Hidden somewhere amongst the meekly, tis one invitee I seek, he shall all my mistakes undo. Tis the king in yellow whose great wealth I shall accrue. When his shadow passes through, wealth will come to I and you. Lo, your plans shall surely languish, and this whole town will know anguish for the king as whom they say, which shall this city indeed smite. If he comes, you tell him you and I will know his might. I'll be lost within a night. What reward is worth that price? Um. Okay, good to know. If you fuck up the lines, you die. Holy shit. Okay. Uh, I don't know what I did. I guess I miss... I misstepped, so we're gonna fix that. Give me a sec here. All right. Okay, I don't know what I did, but that's good to know, I guess. Um, go back to it. All right, let me try this a little slower. All right. Wearing this expensive clothing, pardon for my family's loathing. Lasting till I'm decomposing all my friends whom strife I've caused. Yes, preparing for this night, their forgiveness is the cause. They shall all be proud because I have brought the king to us. Oh shit. Oh shit. End scene! Yes, bitches. Why, thank you. That was actually pretty fun. I haven't gotten to flex my acting chops since high school. You are no stranger to the stage, I can tell. Yeah, I was a theater kid. My school did Macbeth. We're jewels of the bard, are we? If you've performed Shakespeare, then you must be an actor of sufficient ability to survive my play. Tell me, what role were you? The leading man, I presume. I was tree number four. I wasn't aware that was a role. It's not. You weren't even the leading tree? Ah, don't worry, I was actually Macbeth. But you said you were a tree. Acting. Oh, you are good. Well, hey, what's happening to you? Fret, dearest. 
Something is simply passing between my planet's light and your bedroom. A cloud, perhaps. You know the proverb, wherever the golden light of Carcosa shines, the shadow of the unspeakable one is cast? It's a literal rule. I can only be wherever the light of my planet star Carcosa shines. In other words, I can't reach you at night when you're not standing in natural light or if anything obstructs your view of Carcosa. That explains why Missy had a weird daytime curfew. She literally vanished when the sun sets. What a Cinderella-like curse. That also explains how she got in my room. My window may have been locked, but the curtains were open, allowing the light in. So she can't get into my room if I close my curtains? Aww, I was quite enjoying my time with you. I wanted to stay a little longer. Alas, parting is such sweet sorrow. Wow. It may be some time until your sky clears. Till then, I bid you adieu. Damn, okay. Alright. Looks like I have one hell of a choice to make. Lynetta hasn't been summoned yet, and Esther's stuck outside for the moment, so I have a moment to collect my thoughts. Between Lynetta and Esther, who do I want to smooch? Or maybe more accurately, who am I more afraid of? Do I stay with Lynetta? Or do I follow Esther this time around? She is offering twice as many smooches, after all. I need to make my choice. If I want to stay with Lynetta, then I should focus on casting spells from her book. If I want to smooch Esther, then I should open my window again when the clouds clear and use Esther's book. And if I try going for both, well, walking down the middle of the road's bound to get me run over. Long as they aren't both in the same room at the same time, I should be safe. Right? Oh man, what am I gonna do? Either way, I need to talk to Lynetta. She might be an avatar of world-ending calamity, but she might be able to help me get my head straight. Speaking of my head, why does my forehead feel kind of sticky? I don't know. Why does your forehead feel sticky? Oh. Okay. Can, can, well, we just can't wash our hands. Our hands are bloody. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Good to know. Good to know. Taking that down. Good talk. Okie dokie. Um, I guess I have to talk to Lynetta? Alright. Um, we will do that then. Let's give it a try. Darling, it's you! Hey, Lynetta! It's nice to see her despite everything I've been through so far. Sure, she may have ended the reality I was from, but she never lied or deceived me in any way. She told me up front what would happen if I did it willingly. That said, I'm really glad you're here, but... Can you tell me what happened to me? To that world that we dated in? Just as I thought, only... Then why am I still here? Why did I survive when the rest of that reality didn't? Oh, darling, don't make me say it. It's embarrassing. You're still here because I'm... I'm still dreaming about you. Oh, no. Everything in existence is being dreamed about by at least one Eldritch God. So as long as you're on my mind, you'll exist somewhere. Oh, this is cute and gross and sad and horrible. That's actually kind of sweet in a terrifying kind of cosmic way. What would happen if every god stopped dreaming at the same time? What if you all woke up at once? Everything, including all of the gods, would cease to be. Uh, that can just happen at any time. Nah, don't worry. There's about 50 of us total. So the chances of all of us being awake at the same time are low. There's only like 50 of you <laughs> in all? She probably knows Esther closely. Mm -hmm. Family, uh, do, do, you, do you know Esther? Esther? Darling, I thought I told 
told you not to mention other women while we're together. Especially not my sister. Sister? Uh, I can't stand frissy little boyfriend stealing. Don't I have a great relationship with her? Absolutely not. We've been fighting over planets and followers for eons. It wouldn't be a stretch to call us nemeses. Ah, Thanksgiving dinner must be awkward. <laughs> Good thing I washed my face. Playboy instincts jumping out here. I didn't do that because I was being a playboy. I did it because I... If Lynetta saw that lipstick smear on my forehead, I'd be in hot water right about now. Well, I still am in hot water now, actually. I've gotten involved with her sister. A messy affair is bad enough, but with a family member? Fuck, I'm toast if she finds out. Esther. Looks like the clouds haven't cleared yet. I won't be able to see her right now, even if I wanted to. For now, I should work through Lynetta's spells again. Eldritch Hand saved my ass last time. I better cast that one in, in case I'm unable to talk again. Ugh, listen to myself. What the hell's wrong with me, man? Okie dokie. Ritual knife it is. Oh, shit. It's still as unnerving as I remember. In this reality, it's just my hand now. Forever. Ah, it's such a nice day out. Why don't you open your window? Let a little light in here? Oh, no. No, no, wait! What is it? Uh, uh, are you sure you want to do that? What do you mean? Uh, I mean, uh, don't you want to shower first before you, you know, you go out like, uh, last time? Huh? Why would you suggest that? Oh no, don't tell me. Do I still smell like the ocean? No! Why would you say that? You don't say that to girls. Uh, just a tad salty. Why would you say that? You don't say that to girls? Heavens below. I'm so sorry, darling. I'll be right back. No peeking by, I love you. You don't say that to girls. That was a close one. If she opened that window, Esther would have come. I would have been a goner. Looks like the clouds have cleared and Lynetta's out of the room. If I want to date Esther, it's go time. Otherwise, if I want to stay with Lynetta, I need to make absolutely sure that the window never opens. Ever. It's time to choose. From this point on, my actions will have consequences. Um, can I just not at all? Interesting. What happens if I wear the gold mask? Interesting. I already know what you're gonna say, your highness. Yellow's more your color than mine, but I still look pretty good, right? You clean up well. I'm impressed. You'd be presentable before my royal court in that. I, you know, I'm not really sure why he's not being honest. It's a pretty snug fit. The mask almost feels alive. Like it's molding to fit my face perfectly. I feel a twist of metal digging into my temples. It's stuck to my face somehow. Ow! Ow! It really won't come off! <laughs> I may have failed to mention that we reenact the play with deadly accuracy. From this point on in the play, your character never removes his mask. So neither shall you. Oh no. This surely shouldn't be a problem for someone who is planning to be my eternal servant. I can't even blink anymore. My eyelids are stretched to meet the indifferent metal of the eye holes. This is... What do I have to wear this to work when I see family? When I see Lynetta? Wait a minute. Those strange people outside. They all had masks stuck to them, too. Are they 
past followers who became Esther's servants? Is that going to be my fate? Oh, no. Apply mask, raid mask, elegant robes, a fixed ritual knife. When all is complete, look in the mirror. Uh, I did that on accident. Well lit, enters robe, wears a mask. That's really stupid. It's really stupid that if you if you speed read it oh oh there's a different path if you select Lynetta okay interesting I'm okay this is really interesting okay uh so I gotta slow down I gotta slow my roll but that's okay Need knife? Oh, did I forget my knife? Ah, that explains it. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. I figured out what I'm doing. All right. I should be able to read... That's not safe, okay. Um, all right. Oh, do I not have access? That's foreboding, okay. Um, ritual knife on person. Okay, so masquerade mask, elegant robes, ritual knife, look in the mirror. Interior well lit, wear, wearing robes and mask. Mask, robes, okay, cool. Well lit, okay. That should be it. So let's try it this time. Welcome, company much cherish. May my loneliness thus perish to this evening where she will share which would be wasted by myself. No attendants have arrived tonight, alas, besides thyself, but I'll be beside myself when the king reveals himself. Lay thine hands upon my bodice, for before you stands a goddess, know this guest of goldenrod is merely the first of the night. Let us drink to your great wealth and family and life, lasting till your afterlife all be yours once he arrives. Yes, until my schemes may flourish, we shall haunt my empty fortress. Let us dance a whirling dervish while we feed our appetites. By the morrow we shall know if the king came tonight. Midnight marks the final chime. Until that comes, there is still time. graciously obeisance, demonstrate a courtly patience. He declines no invitation he receives upon his court. All who live in doomed Yatil will know without report. The king arrived by your escort. A prophecy of grim import. Okay, is that it? Yay! Oh, I got claps. That's good. I got claps. Yeah, man. That's cool. An immaculate performance, dearest. Bravissimo. That's what I'm here for. That's what I'm here for. Thank you. There's only one more scene to reenact, and then this world will be mine. Oh, boy. I should probably have asked before we get to the final act, but this play isn't a tragedy, right? No. Actually, a huge relief. What happens? Your character is slain, and all of his wishes come true in an unexpected way. In his ambitions of greed, influence, and fame, he dies penniless, alone, and infamous. Wait, my character dies? I'm gonna die? I thought you said it was a comedy. It's merely tragedy from far enough away, dearest. Wow. I really don't appreciate <laughs> that they're hitting with some real life bullshit. Is she implying that she thinks my death would be funny? I get she's an outer god, so human morals don't apply to her, but she's... I mean, that's gotta be cruel, even for her. No way can I go through with that, I'm sorry, I, I don't want to die again. I anticipated that you might get cold feet, 
fade after learning of your character's fate. However, my wrath is the king in yellow fire. So, for your sake, dearest, do the fucking scene. <coughs> okay. Um, red fire, the king, or a hungry uninvited guest may do not make a mistake or a hungry uninvited guest may. So allow the king. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't. I guess if you click on her, it fucks with her. That's good to know. Okay, so I'm closing that. Um, because I'm, I want to fuck this up for the hungry uninvited guest, because that's going to be our third, our third girl. So let's see what <coughs> happens. <laughs> Only one of three? Interesting. She, okay, so there must be... She must be difficult to get then. Okay, open the curtains. So I can't do it more than once, it seems. The room is filled with the mouth-watering aroma of perfectly seasoned meat and fresh fruit. There must be a magical component involved here, because I see no less than three of my favorite dishes. Esther is strutting towards my bed. I didn't think she was going to let me have any. Don't mind if I do. What was that? It sounded like groans of murderous anger from outside the door. Was that from the masked stalkers outside? If they've all got masks on their faces, they must be Esther's followers. Or even ex-partners. Then their groans were of jealousy? Makes sense. They've been locked outside all this time. I bet they'd kill for the chance to spend any time with Esther. silken sheets at least 1000 i presume silk my blankets are cotton <sighs> perhaps i'll just stand while you feed me instead wow picky if she's that up he maybe i'll start with the grapes something that'll feed her princess complex uh, help. Oh. Delightful. i'm glad another hey think i could have one of these <laughs> already touched it. If you want an indirect kiss, you'll have to be more clever than that. Oh yeah? So you won't eat anything my lips have touched either? Of course not. You were eyeing the cream puff, right? Would you like me to feed you a bite? Oh, heavens below, yes. I am pleased by this new attitude of yours, dearest. I casually take a bite out of the cream puff. What do you think you're doing? <coughs> Oh, delicious. So good. I've never had anything like it. Let me try. Oh, you want a bite? Even though my lips have touched it? I, I don't want it after all. Well, I mean, if you don't want it, then I guess I can have some now, right? Hey, hold on. Oh, it's really delicious. Nothing tastes better than food with a twist of eldritch magics. It's a shame you don't want any of it. What's it gonna be? Watch me eat your favorite dessert or suffer an indirect kiss. Same, sis! What was that? I order you to hand over the cream puff. Very well, my king. I offer the other half of the cream puff to her eager hands, but instead... I forgot I was hand-feeding her. Her lips are insanely soft against my fingers. She's damn cute when she drops her sadistic front. 
I'd do more, but I feel those husks staring jealous daggers into my back. They'll tear my head off if I let this go on. Shouldn't we save some of this for the play? It'll hurt the performance if we eat the entire set, won't it? I suppose. Very well. Let us resume the play. All right. Oh boy, howdy. Okay. Um, interior, no light besides the open window. All right. Open window. Okay. Enters wearing robes and a mask. Got that already. Damn the night, and moral scornful, wicked morning, unremorseful. Why tonight must I be mournful for ambitions unfulfilled? After all my preparations, all the daylights I have killed, why is it us only still? Oh, why are my wishes unfulfilled? Okay. Good to know. Wretched guest, you've come to mock me? For bemusement thou wast hawking, and so in the town you stalked me to watch my schemes fall apart? Strip thy mask, apologize, then hastily depart. Leave thee just my broken heart, leave naught else in whole or part. Wear no mask, now witness, for it was thee who hast permit this golden guest to own the dimness of the city of Yatil. Oh shit, it's getting real. For I'm the king oh. yellow whose long shadow is on Yatil, and whose shadow you're in still. Dark as death is now Yatil. Oh. That's a spicy under under petticoat cage. Petty cage. Petticoat cage. Ugh, draw thy blade from mine contusion. My life reaches its conclusion. Cruelty matched by your delusion that you truly are the king. Yes, you would have granted all my wishes, not forsaken me. If indeed you were the king, why would you have murdered me? But I've granted all your wishes, I'm afraid I disagree. All alone you are with all of your remaining family. And as vision turns to darkness, you have claimed to all you see. And you'll wear that mask and robe for the rest of all your life indeed. And the strong will fall to illness, haunt you too with Stillness and none left alive to witness my ascension to your till. And from the catacombs shall spill the cries of innocence laid still. We heard from lady and from smithy and from throne to peasant mill. Cries unprecedented in the history. This is a long monologue. Wales, unlike they'll ever be again in dark your till. That your invitations quill brought the king to black your till. Is that it? It's good. It's good. Thank you! Oh, thank you! <laughs> You're all too kind! Listen to that applause! Hey! Thank you, Septic! The euphoria of a flawless recitation! Innumerable voices make up the cacophony of cheering outside my door. Fanatical revelry, screams of terror and sadistic amusement, all amidst thunderous applause. The king has come. Smiles, dearest, smiles! Aren't you proud of yourself? Why? Why didn't you use a stage knife? I, I'm really bleeding out here. My blood streams from a gaping wound in my chest. My abdomen is unseamed. To sure you stay in character. Call it method acting, if you will. Oh, so you're... You gonna be like that. Oh, with sweet sorrow the curtain falls, and the show begins. The stage is now set for you to inscribe the yellow <coughs> sign. Do this, and I will bestow upon you the smooch I promised. <coughs> you mean the smooches you promised. Plural. You said you'd give me two. Even now, that's really all you can think about? Your world is being here. by a horror. 
horror from beyond the stars. Yeah, fuck that. You're dying from a stab wound. Yep. And you're worried about smooches? Yep. You are an interesting human. It is a pity that you'll soon cast away your individuality for me. <coughs> I mean, I, I, I don't... I don't have to. We could just smooch. Host expires, last verse kills audience, king exits, recast the role of host, begin the play anew. The yellow sign is only visible or drawable by those who have witnessed or performed the king in yellow play. Being exposed to the yellow sign after witnessing the play will cause a permanent, irreversible obsession with the king, her court, and Carcosa. This insane obsession persists after death. If you are content to spend your life with the king, dim all the lights, leaving your windows open, light black fire candles, allow otherworldly images to reveal themselves, and draw the shape below without the X. Cool. Behold the yellow sign. Become my slave, my eternal captive audience. I am entropy. Disorder. Where things are built tall, I appear to knock them down. Monuments, nations, relationships. Some of these husks have wedding rings on their fingers. I steal the hearts and minds of the rich or powerful to break them. Litter my court with them like gold dust. But why me of all people? I'm broke. Because I am the breeze of chaos that knocks down any power that challenges the grandness of my court. Your relationship with my sister was one of those things. Oh, bro, that's not cool. Before, I only pursued you because you have a great deal of cloud amongst the Nycolin crowd and shrewd wealthy types. You would have been an incredibly powerful servant who would have been able to draw in countless wayward souls that meet my standards. I'm hurt. At least, until that reality ended and you undid all of my hard work. That's really shitty. I my followers that I had stolen from Lynetta. Gone in an instant. And I had no choice but to abandon that reality. There's nothing left to destroy if nothing exists, you see. But in this reality, I've stolen away her most powerful asset. You. Just as I've stolen every member of my entourage. I'm a little heartbroken. All the husks. They're bleeding from their chests onto their elegant robes. Just like me. All these people. Why? Why? Because it's what I do. No, I mean, why are they still here? Aren't they kind of third-wheeling our moment here? I mean, fucking, come on, kick them out! Huh? Such a defiant tone! Why aren't you under the effects of the yellow sign? Were you... unaffected? Did... did the spell fail? I don't feel any different. You're supposed to be obsessed with me! Uh, I mean, I, I already was since I first saw you. That's why your little spell didn't work. <laughs> you can try and resist it all you want, but one way or another, you're my eternal slave from now on. Are you proposing to me? I accept. No, dearest, I'm not talking about marriage. What I'm talking about is catering to my every whim, anticipating my every desire. And living solely to please me. Yeah, uh, I mean, that just sounds like marriage. No! I'm talking about a servitude where you do nothing but kiss the ground I walk on and revere me for all of time. A servitude unlike anything on Earth, where you never so much as think of anyone else. So marriage? No, we, we have that on Earth. It's, it's called marriage. It's different! It, it's not... How so? It means no freedom. Forever. You are only permitted to do as I say. Yeah. And it means preparing every single one of my meals for me, whenever I so wish. Yeah, for sure. And it means never being allowed to quit your servitude. You'll never be free of me so long as you live. Uh, until death do us part, even? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm- I'm- okay, I'm sorry, but you're literally just describing being married. 
I mean, hey, I mean, if that's what you want, I'm in. I mean, let's get married. I preferred you from the beginning. I already broke up with Lynetta and the other reality, actually. Why are you being so persistent? You can't really want to marry me that badly. You're just trying to act all smooth, so I give you your second smooch. Save it for our wedding day. Uh, it, you can't be serious, right? <laughs> Wow, there's a lot of endings.